Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be returning to a game that I've covered once before, and that is a game called A Legionary's Life. Uh, this is a game that's an early access that lets you play as a Roman legionary during the Second Punic War, and supposedly also beyond. Uh, today's uh, video is going to be uh, starting a brand new game, because in our last game we died within like 30 minutes, and we're going to see how far we can get. Now, one of the nice things about this game is when you first try, you kind of are basically a really raw green recruit. But as you play a couple of times, you actually get some bonus setup points so that you can make a better starting legionary. So you don't have to start out quite as crappy uh, in, you know, in your games. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a new game. Uh, we're just going to go with the base level of 50-50-50 across the board. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, pick our name, which will be... Uh, a butch uh, for short for butcher uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and we've got uh, six points left that we can assign to different uh, attributes I think actually wait a minute so my understanding is that each time you die you get one of one more of these points so you can see up top here it says we have six points that we can use to improve our starting character and it's really important that you do improve your starting character because your, your character kind of starts off pretty crappy and by your first fight, you're never even going to be a trained legionary. The problem that I've been finding is that the only thing I can find I can use these points on seems to be for a little bit of extra starting cash, which could be useful, like in buying better equipment. And actually, uh, I am going to go ahead and um, spend a little bit of money here early on uh, to, to get better equipment uh, with what I can afford. But I, I don't I don't fully understand it. So if any of you if any of you who might be more experienced in the game do understand it, I think it would be great for you to kind of uh, help point out uh, the significance of these starting points. Because again, as far as I can tell, the only thing you can really use them on is getting a little bit of extra cash. Because getting better strength, endurance, constitution that all costs twenty five, and we only have six points to use. Um, I have no idea how you would ever be a natural swordsman. That costs four thousand. Like, how would you ever get that much money? Um, you know, it's 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 pretty crazy that 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 stuff starts off so expensive. I don't know if they're expecting you to play for like five thousand hours in order to get that, or what, or maybe I'm just totally misreading the situation. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, but with that being said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just jump ahead about a minute or so because this was taken from a live stream from the other night. Uh, and we'll just jump ahead to the start of the battle because all I end up doing here is spending my money on uh, on a little bit of extra starting cash. It's like, great, what's the point of that? All right, so we're going to skip this intro because we've already listened to it a few times um, or I've already read through it once. But basically, Second Punic War is ongoing. Hannibal is campaigning in Italy and we are a legionary that's being sp sent to Hispania with Scipio Africanus uh, to go after the... Uh, Carthaginian holdings there, because while Hannibal was operating in Italy, uh, his base of line of supply essentially flowed through Spain, through southern Gaul, and then across the Alps into Rome. And so since they couldn't hit at Hannibal directly, uh, they did uh, hit at him indirectly and went after the, uh, the source of a lot of Carthage's manpower and economy in Hispania. So that's what we're doing. Uh, New Carthago, or Carthago, I forget the name of the city that we're going after, but basically we're going after the capital of Carthage in Hispania. So you can see here, we're starting out here, our morale is content, our virtue is flat, our troop, centering, and proconsul opinions of us are all flat, and we've got quite a bunch of turns that we can use to try and train ourselves and make ourselves better. We do have a little bit of money, uh, so we could go ahead and, uh, I guess, search for things to buy to make our uh, soldier a little bit better. We can get a better weapon, actually. We do have enough gold if we want to get either an Italic uh, Zephos or the Glanus uh, Hispanius. Um, so I think what we will do is we'll go ahead and spend a little bit of money uh, to get slightly better uh, weapons, I guess. So we'll go ahead and buy that, and then we'll go back and we'll sell. And you can see here, we've got the Gladys uh, Hispaniasis, which we have purchased, which is uh, the same level, I guess, of a, I don't know what the, looks like two crafting, three material quality. So it's much better material quality. Uh, it does four to 15 damage, while the Italic Zephos only does one to 12. Anti-armor of the current, or the old weapon was 28. 
The new weapon is 36. Handiness, 54. Whoops. Versus the old weapon, which was 51. Reach, 2 versus 2. So in general, the new weapon is much better. So we'll go ahead and confirm the sale because we spent most of our money on that. And then uh, now we have 14 denarii or whatever our currency is, and we've got a better sword. So we'll go ahead and leave this the sales experience. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and train, and we're going to train primarily with swords. Javelins can be useful to weaken an opponent before they come uh, at you, uh, but honestly, swords play is where the bulk of the combat seems to be focused. Uh, and I think we can actually focus sparring focus. I don't... Oh, okay. So... We can choose a balanced approach for sparring, or we can go with defensive, or we can go with uh, offensive. So, so essentially focus on the shield, the sword, or balanced approach. First thing we're going to do is just do some solo play, though. So we're going to go ahead and do back-to-back -back, uh, swords play. And then what someone else uh, advised me to do was basically never do the same thing more than twice in a row. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we are going... I don't have money for a sacrifice. So we're going to go ahead and do some leisure. And I think... Um, let's just have some fun. So I spent my 10 denarii, my morale increased by 5. Doing that also made my morale high. I'm not quite sure what the impact of morale is on my actual, um, I don't know, skills. So go ahead and use sword play two, two more times. Go ahead and do leisure again. I don't think I have money to do uh, have fun anymore. So we just went ahead and hung around and relaxed. And we're going to kind of keep going in and training with our sword, which again is the main focus here, and uh, we'll just kind of keep doing 2-1-2-1-2-1, essentially. Opinion of troops is increased by 1, morale is increased by 1. Nice. Okay, so our morale went up a little bit. Uh, you can see our morale is currently high, so we could actually overtrain if we wanted to. The thread of my life is spun. You have known Quintus Labanius since you were kids. Now he's in the same maniple as you. You have noticed he's been acting very nervously of late. Ask him what's wrong. Quintus snaps at you. Whatever the reason behind his behavior, he doesn't want to talk about it. At least you tried. Virtue increased by two. Opinion increased by or decreased by three. Damn. Apparently we're a little nosy. Um, I don't remember if we just did solo practice. But went ahead and trained two more times there. Do some more leisure. Hang around. Opinion and morale kind of keeps inching up. One of the other things that... Um, I think is kind of interesting is if your virtual I did play off screen a little bit and if your virtue actually drops uh, below a certain level you can commit war crimes basically so there's the scene in the first combat uh, sequence where you can essentially choose to go in and rob a family and murder them but then some Carthaginian guards fall on you and if you're not a good soldier as I was not you end up getting killed you're on guard duty when you hear a strange noise it came from somewhere to your left investigate it's just an owl. With relief, you go back to your post. Okay. So we'll go ahead and leisure one more time. We'll go ahead and train. My progress is slowing down, though there's still significant room for improvement. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and hang around one more time. Opinion increases. I do have enough money for leisure uh, activities, but... I don't think I have my, I only have 40 some odd denarii, so it's probably not worth it. Um, working out probably would have been a smart thing to do. Quickness and endurance, coordination and endurance, strength and constitution. Strength and con strength, I don't know what strength is, but constitution is basically health. Um, quickness and coordination and endurance, I think. Really? Okay. Um, training, let's spar anyone. Great. So what is our character currently? Uh, I think th what I read was like a 70 or maybe it's like a 60 is what you really want to be to be, or sorry, sword skill. I think you have to be at least like 50 to be considered a trained legionary. So obviously we didn't really make any progress there. 41 sword, 29 shield, 29 javelin. Awareness is 48. Everything else is at least 50. Coordination did go up one. Um, so we're not in great shape as we're about to move on to our first battle. We'll see if we survive this or not. The camp bursts into activity as the whole army prepares to leave. 
You march to the south. It doesn't take long for your destination to become apparent. You're bound for New Carthage, the capital of Carthaginian co the colonies in Spain. It's a daring and very risky move. Several days later, you reach your destination and set camp not far from the city. According to Camp Talk, the closest enemy army is about ten days' march from here. A long siege is out of the question. You'll have to take New Carthage by storm. You cast a glance at the city walls, strong stone walls. The thought of fighting your way up there makes your stomach churn. It's hard not to think that you might be looking at the place where your days will end. Okay, so we are into phase two, or at least part two of the game. You can see here, uh, this is basically the battle phase. We can kind of keep an eye on what deeds we've done, enemies vanquished, awards won. We can keep an eye on our, um, our inventory, which is basically nothing. We've got two javelins, we've got our new sword, uh, not really much in the way of armor, other things like that. Um, we also have our character information, which we already looked at in terms of our overall stats. Uh, and then we've got our high morale, our medium virtue, medium troop opinion, centurion, and proconsul. So we'll go ahead and continue. And then the next morning, you reach your maniple, uh, or your maniple is among the first to move out and reach, um, ah, blah, blah. The next morning, your maniple is among the first to move out of the camp and reach the plain right in front of the city. If what your centurion said is true, the garrison of New Carthage consists of a small mercenary army, possibly 1,000 strong, and, of course, the city militia. You're taking your place on the battlefield when all of a sudden, cries of alarm rise from the ranks. You look ahead at, with a start. The city gate is wide open. A screaming mass, numbering thousands, leaves the safety of the walls, quickly closing the gap with your partially deployed first line. Judging by their scant equipment, they must be the militia. The enemy commander wouldn't risk his precious mercenaries like this. Blood pounding in your ears, you're ready to receive them as the first battle of your life engulfs you. Okay, so with the other side uh, is at you right distance, you prepare to hold your javelin. Uh, pick a specific target. What an embarrassing throw. Well, I haven't trained my javelin at all. Opinions <laughs> decreased by two, morale decreased by two. Well, so people think I'm pathetic, so I probably would have been better off just throwing it at the mass. I was like, get closer, steal yourself for the incoming fight. All right, so enemy militiaman is attacking us. On the top left here in this red circle is our, represents our health. I believe this one here to the right represents our sort of coordination. And the one down here, I think, represents like fatigue or something to that effect. So we'll go ahead and throw our javelin. And we lose a little bit of our coordination, slow reaction time, and I think gain a little bit of fatigue. Um, so now we're still pretty coordinated. Uh, we still have, uh, I think, good levels of uh, ability to attack. You can see here we can go ahead and attack, um, and then we can choose what we want to attack. And these sort of thumb indicators represent the likelihood of us having a successful attack. So basically a 50-50 shot, or maybe slightly less than 50-50 shot, if we attack the torso of doing health damage, good chance of penetrating the enemy armor. You can kind of look across here. All of these thumbs are kind of about the same, except for going for the neck. It's unlikely that we would do any damage there. We probably wouldn't hit him. So we're going to go ahead and uh, attack the torso. You can see we missed, and we lose quite a bit of our uh, coordination there. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to recover and uh, succeeded. So we got a bunch of our coordination back. Uh, meanwhile, the enemy attacked us, and uh, he missed us. So he loses a bunch of his coordination. And each time you attack, and each time you lose coordination or gain, or, or the enemy loses coordination, that influences the overall combat here. So you can see he attacked and missed, which means he's now no longer as coordinated, which means his little blue circle here starts to ebb out, while ours jumped forward with the successful uh, respite. Uh, and now that plays into the uh, combat ability. Now we have a pretty good chance if we attack his torso of, uh, of hitting him, better than 50-50 anyway. So we'll go ahead and attack. You can see there we hit him and we did some health damage. Um, so he then used his next turn to recover. He succeeded to recover, but then his charge failed and he lost a lot more coordination again. So now we can attack again and we have an even better chance of doing damage. You can see here the fatigue cost is three uh, and you can see the different impacts of each attack. So I'm not sure which one does the most damage. Um, health damage times six or 0 0.6, 0 0.1. I'm assuming torso, actually it looks like head damage is going to do the most, 1.5, uh, groin is 1.2, and neck is 2. So neck is the most deadly. We're going to go for head though because we don't have a good chance of hitting his neck. There you go. You can see we did 19 health damage to him by using the head attack. And now actually we can attack again, and we'll do the head again to see if we can kill this guy. Now there you go, 12 more. 
So he keeps trying to recover. He's kind of in a fatal funnel here. As long as our rolls keep going for us, uh, we should be relatively good. Now, he did just succeed in recovering, which means our odds of a, a successful head attack dropped a bit. But the torso isn't, you know, isn't too bad of an odd, and also his health is relatively low, so we might finish him off. Ah, damn it. All right. We'll go with about a 50-50 we lost. There you go. All right, so we killed the enemy. That improved the opinion of our fellow soldiers, uh, and it also improved our morale. So through eight rounds, eight attacks, we managed to kill an enemy militiaman. And that gives us the combat log. I think in that case, what we do is we just recover. And another enemy militiaman is approaching. So an enemy militiaman approached, he attacked, he missed. We're pretty tired over here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and see if we can attack him successfully through the torso. We did. We're going to go ahead and attack his head. Another success there. He keeps failing in his recovery, although he did just succeed there. You can see we are starting to, I think, get exhausted. I think that's what that green represents. Um, let's try one more attack. You can see as we continue to fail our attacks, our likelihood of success go, go down. Can we rest? That failed. Rest again. That failed again. Rest again. That failed again. All right, so we'll go just go ahead and uh, try and attack his head, I guess, again. Miss. So the situation is changing up here, it's telling us. So basically it means this battle is about to end. It's unlikely I will kill another one of these guys. Just trying to do a little bit more damage. We did, we did a reasonable amount of damage. We influenced about half his hit about half his health and you can see eventually the formation starts breaking apart very soon panic spreads as their wavering turns into a rout so our forces held the field and were successful the carthaginian militia is in disarray for a brief moment you stare at the bodies scattered around the ground a few legionaries but the vast majority are militiamen in the ensuing chaos you barely have time to think about your first kill an improvised pursuit is attempted but your vanguard is stopped at the city gate before it can break in so you can see our morale is high. Opinion of our troops of us went up a little bit. In terms of deeds, we did kill an enemy militiaman, so that was a success. Um, but we kind of got tired out by um, the uh, end of that battle. Um, I was thinking about saving, but actually I think this game has permadeath, so that's probably not super useful. All right, so I guess in that case we're just going to continue the story here. The centurion beckons to some of your comrades. After a brief talk, they move away from the maniple. You wonder what's going on. The rest of you will storm the city walls. Many ladders are being propped up against the walls, while a constant shower of missiles is raining down from the battlements. The centurion promises to share a generous portion of his reward should he manage to be the first man over the walls. Uh, I guess we'll do our best to help the centurion. We spring forward and are determined to open the way. We stumble, losing speed and balance. Now we make for an easy target. One of the missiles hits you. Your health is decreased by 7. Armor protection, 7. You're way too vulnerable here. You're hit again. Your health decreased by 16. The defender's resistance gets more and more reckless with despair. There's no way to reach the top. At least, at least, the centurion has noticed your intrepid efforts. The cacophony is unbearable. Cries from both enemies and allies blend with a thud of stones and smaller projectiles bouncing all around you. Suddenly, the noise begins to dwindle and fade. You can't believe what you're seeing. Hundreds of Roman legionaries are running along the top of the walls coming from the north. How did they get there? Anyhow, the Punics are melting before them, leaving the battlements unguarded. In the end, your allies reach the gate and open it, letting in the bulk of your legions. Okay, so um, what does that get us right now? Our health is where? Uh, health is 23 out of 50. That's pretty shitty. We lost the bulk of our health. We still have one more fight to go. Uh, follow your maniple into the city streets. Your orders are very clear. Secure the city by killing everything that meets you in the open. Hopefully nobody will be so ill-considered. Your thoughts are interrupted when a small number of militiamen stand in your path. All right, so we've got a militiaman coming at us. We'll go for an attack on the torso. We are fresh, at least in terms of our, um, in terms of our fatigue, we're fresh again. So we'll go ahead and attack the torso again. Another successful hit. We're going to go for the torso again. I'm just going to kind of keep... Ah, oh, shit. 
I was going to try and keep the mom momentum going with just successful attacks rather than going for the higher uh, hit value. But um, we did fail there a bit. He, uh, fortunately, he succeeded in getting his his coordination back, but he um, failed in his attack, so he lost a lot of what he got back. Meanwhile, our uh, following attack succeeded. It's odd that the head attack would actually be about the same. Okay. Two of our comrades joined the fight, so now it's three legionaries versus one enemy militiaman. I'm gonna attack his head. God damn it. I don't know if it's just because I'm too tired or what. My other legionaries are doing their job, though. We'll just go for a torso hit. There we go. Ah, oh, we didn't quite finish him off. So, uh, I guess we got a share of a kill there. You look at the militiaman's lifeless body, quick thoughts flickering through your mind. Pity. Drafted into service, forced to fight and defend his home, it does ring a bell. You wonder about the people waiting for him at home, never to see him come back. We're very virtuous. An officer yelling out orders brings you back down to earth. With a bump, you move on. You keep marching along the streets as is custom. Looting is strictly prohibited until the battle is over. So this is where if you had lower virtue, you could actually loot. Um, our health, I think, stays the same. So we shared a militiaman kill and we killed a militiaman. Our health is still at... 23 out of 50. We need to get that up, but I don't think we can during the battle. New Carthage is almost conquered, but 500 mercenaries from the garrison are still holding the citadel. The proconsul is looking for volunteers for an assault on this last bastion. He's throwing in more than double the loot share. These mercenaries are nothing like the militia you've been facing until now. They may not be the enemy's best troops. They wouldn't have left here, or they wouldn't have been left here if they were, but they are still professional soldiers. Only the most experienced legionaries are volunteering. No one would blame you if you backed off. Yeah, I'm not going to go after this. If my health was at 100%, I might. But this is permadeath, and I don't want this series to end already. We already got ourselves, uh, you know, uh, hurt pretty badly going up the walls. So I'll just back off now. Okay. So we'll continue here. New Carthage has fallen for the first time in many years. A changing in the tide of war appears within grasp. Morale increases by 8 my share of the loot is 80 denarii. The army has obtained an important base of operations. The city's resources will be invaluable for the rest of the campaign. So my morale is very high. I don't know what impact that has on anything, but that's good to know. Uh, fighting in a real battle is sharpen your skills. Your sword skills, uh, shield skills, and javelin skills all go up by three. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here, and we're going to end this episode. It's a little bit of a shorter one, but... Uh, this seems like a good natural stopping point between major campaigns, major battles. Uh, we're through the first phase, which I think we actually got through in our first video uh, about this game as well. Um, but we're through our first phase. We survived our first battle, uh, and we managed to kill an enemy soldier. So uh, one kill and one uh, shared kill. So a successful result all around. Um, this game is called A Legionary's Life, uh, and it is available on Steam. It is currently in early access, uh, so the game is being actively developed. Uh, it's not completely finished or polished. I imagine it may even change a bit uh, before, uh, before release. Uh, it has a very positive uh, reception so far, 67 positive reviews. Not a ton of reviews, but it's an indie game. It seems to be made by one person. Uh, it looks like the developer and the publisher are both listed as Alessandro Roberti. Uh, and the game is available for $8 on Steam. So uh, it's like a little bit of an enhanced text ad adventure type game. And I'm really enjoying my time in it. Uh, I'm only about three hours into my gameplay, uh, all told, between the first video, this video, and some time off camera. But so far, it sounds like it seems like a really interesting, challenging game that has, uh, you know, the, the permadeath element to it. Um, so let me know if you guys would like to see more of this. I just, I think it's a cool little thing. And I, I think this is... Uh, something that I'm really interested to see how the game develops over time. Uh, and I know it's not a ton to look at, but just the, the storytelling and the writing, there clearly is a good deal of, of passion and effort and uh, care put behind this game. Uh, and so I want to keep showing it off because I'm enjoying my time with it. Uh, but that's enough of me rambling. Uh, let's go ahead and sign off here, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow with another video. Uh, the next uh, Legionary's Life video will probably be... Tuesday, I would guess, uh, but we'll see how that shapes out. Uh, but anyway, uh, as uh, as I always like to say in sort of my 
uh, my catchphrase. This is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out. Bye-bye!